Hi, a few of you touched on this idea of preparing young people for the future and also kind of touching on rural decay that you talked about. Um, when I was doing work in rural Nevada, one of my greatest frustrations was the tendency, and it was so tempting, right, especially with low, low income kids and at risk kids to put them on a track with technical skill education. Um, to meet the demands of the state. I was working in Nevada, so it was all about advanced manufacturing with Tesla building their battery factory in northern Nevada. And it was so frustrating because that totally trumped like what you were talking about, this, this, this great need for creativity and the liberal arts and all of this. And so um, kind of a question for all of you is like, how do you balance this need to keep up with the economy and keep young people coming through the ranks up with the economic demands, but also realize that as human beings and as individuals, we have this creative side and that needs to be nourished. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big believer in like, um, if you can develop um, a passion for learning and curiosity and creativity, like I love uh, dev boot camps. I love hiring people. I, I um, we just parted ways with a pretty senior individual at our company and he's going to a dev boot camp, and I'm gonna hire him in six months. And I think that's way better than him. He didn't know that he would be into engineering and writing code when he was in college. He went to Northwestern. He's got an amazing degree. He's an extremely smart guy. Doesn't know anything about coding. It's not too late. So I think allowing people to sort of um, find that individual path of curiosity and passion and, and learning for learning's sake will develop the skills to go learn the critical technical skills that you need. If learning isn't fun and it's a chore, you'll never, you'll never be able to adapt to an evolving economy. Um, I've done three completely different businesses and I'm constantly challenging myself to relearn and reinvent myself. And I surround myself with people that, that, that think in that way. So I think you gotta be optimistic that if you're developing those skills, you are gonna be a survivor and, and be able to uh, add value over long periods of time. In the bill on that, we, we see a lot in our work all around the city and we work with public charter and private schools all around Chicago and the suburbs. Um, I think two things come to mind. One would be an asset-based asset mindset of the community. There, t there tends to be this sort of assumption that there's not resources or there's not potential there and it really is just a mindset. And so a lot of our early work is just getting this shift in mindset to the human potential and what the kids can do, because it's, it's amazing what they can do. But it, part of it is, is the system or is the teacher or is the parent giving them that opportunity. And then to build on that, I find over and over sort of the kids don't know what they don't know. So like I took my youngest to the Museum of Science and Industry, saw the robotics thing in there, and he loves it. And now he wants to read about it, he wants to learn everything about it, but if he, if he didn't have that experience, he would never know about that passion. And so there's an equity piece to it on what kind of experiences are you having as a young child and as you move up, that's sparking that passion and letting you feed it and learn on it and realizing not every child is having that, so how do we create that and bring that to them or, or help them get connected to it? Yes, I'm a first generation immigrant from India. So in India, uh, if you are not a doctor, if you're not an engineer, you are a failure. That's how parents kind of rate you and your, your, your family and your uncles and aunts and all. Um, the, the, most, the one thing that I most respect about America uh, is you could be a musician and you are seen as a success. You could be an improv actor and you are a success. You could be a good writer and you are a success. You could be an entrepreneur and you are a success. You don't need to be a doctor or an engineer. And to your point, I'm completely in agreement with you is that not everybody, not all 300 million of us have to be in STEM education. Uh, but there needs to be enough of us that need to be there so that we can fill on, on one and we can fill the jobs. And also, there's going to be a lot of jobs there. So if we can start showing them the path to there, they can learn STEM and, and work at Reverb. They don't need to, you know, and they can, or they can, uh, you know, imp improve, improvise how mus music gets produced. Uh, so that, there, is, there are different career paths that they can get. But I, I think liberal art and critical thinking is going to be, continue to be a critical part of education. How do we work in the value of hard work? So I'm all for creative. There's a lot of awesome thinkers out there. We get applicants every day, top of their class, great. You bring them in, and they're really smart people. Success can happen anywhere, but in most of those cases, I think if you peel back the layers, you're going to look at hard work. Nobody up here has not worked hard at, at everything we're passionate about. And I will say that's hard to teach. Maybe, I don't know. 
Uh, we can lead by example, but it's not something that's really listed on a curriculum somewhere. But boy, hard work is hard to beat when we're, we're hiring people. I don't need people that are top of the class. I need people that work hard, and they'll learn. They really do.